Welcome to Div Rhino, a channel dedicated to project-based learning. If you find the videos here to be helpful, please like them and consider subscribing for more content. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to build a Dad Joke CLI tool with Go and Cobra. To follow along, you will need to have Go and the Cobra generator installed. You can find links to the installation pages in the description for this video. Before I begin, I'll change into the Sites folder, which is the directory where I keep my projects. Here we can create a new folder for our Dad Joke project, and then we can change into it. Inside our project directory, we can initialize a new project using the Cobra init command provided to us by the Cobra generator. Usually, you'll want to name your package based on a URL that belongs to you. Here, our package is using example, but feel free to use your own GitHub name instead. Remember this package name because we'll be using it in different parts of our program. If we list the items of our directory, we will see that Cobra init created a license, a command folder, and a main.go file. We'll be using Go modules to handle our dependencies, so let's initialize that now. If you notice, we're using the same package name that we used to initialize our Cobra app earlier. When we list the folder items now, we will see that we have a go.mod file. This means the command ran successfully. Let's open our project up in a text editor. I'm using VS Code, but you can use whichever text editor you're comfortable with. Cobra created a simple app for us. Everything is wired up and working. We just need to build onto it. If we run our program for the first time, we'll see that all our dependencies are being installed first. But towards the end, we can see the placeholder Cobra description. Let's go ahead and change this placeholder text to something that better describes our app. There is a short description and a long one. We will update both. If we run our program now, we'll see the long description we just added. Cobra makes it easy for us to add our own commands, so let's do that now. We can use the Cobra add command to create a new command of our own, which we will call random. Cobra created a brand new random.go file for us inside the command directory. Let's open it up and take a quick look at it. If we run our program now, we will see that random is being listed under the available commands. Let's quickly update the long and short description for our new random command. We will be using the Iconhas Dad Joke API to provide us with jokes data, so let's take a look at their documentation first. The API doesn't require authentication, so we won't have to worry about that. However, it does ask that we include a custom user agent header to describe how we are using the API. This is fair, so we'll make sure to do that. A little further down, we can see the endpoint that we are interested in. If we paste the example curl command into the terminal, it will return a joke as a JSON response. We can see that the joke has an ID, some joke text, and a status code. We can represent this joke structure as a struct within our Go code. Let's first clean up some comments so it's easier for us to see what we're working with. Let's create a joke struct type. This joke struct will have an ID that will be of type string, a joke that will also be of type string, and a status that will be of type int. We need to create a method that we will call every time we run our random command. Let's create this new method and name it getRandomJoke. For now, let's just make it print out a little message. In order for us to see it in action, we need to tell the run command to call it. If we run our random command now, we will see the little message from our getRandomJoke method. Next, we want a way to make a request to the API endpoint. We can achieve this by using the HTTP package from the Go standard library. In the HTTP package docs, let's search for func get. There is a line here that says we should use new request along with default client dot do if we would like to make a request with custom headers. This is the approach we will take because we do, in fact, want to make a request with custom headers. Back in our random.go file, let's import the HTTP package. And then let's also create a new method that connects to the API and requests a random joke. We will call this new method getJokeData. 
GetJokeData will take in the base API URL as its only argument. This argument will be of type string. The GetJokeData method will return a slice of byte. Inside the body of the GetJokeData method, we will use the new request method from the HTTP package to create a new request. The new request method takes in three arguments. First, it takes an HTTP method, then a URL, and then a request body. The new request method returns two values. It returns a request and an error. Let's do some quick error handling before we move on. Now we can add a couple of custom headers. First, we add a header to let the API know we'd like our data encoded as JSON. Then we will add a custom user agent header and briefly describe how we will use the API. Now that we have our response ready, let's pass it into the default client.do method. The default client.do method returns two values. It returns a response and it returns an error. Let's do some quick error handling before we move on. We will need to import the IOUtil package so that we can have access to the readAll method. We will use the readAll method to read our response body. The readAll method returns two values. It returns the response in bytes and it also returns an error. Let's do some quick error handling before we move on. Our getJokeData method is almost done. We just have to return the response bytes. We can now start using our getJokeData method inside our getRandomJoke method. We don't need this little message anymore, so we can remove it. Oh, but before we go any further, we should probably import the JSON package because we need it for the unmarshal method. The unmarshal method takes two arguments. The first argument is data of the type slice of byte. The second argument is an interface into which it can save the past results. It has only one return value, which is an error. Let's first set up the data that we can pass as the first argument to the unmarshal method. Remember that our getJokeData method returns a slice of byte. That is the type we need for our first argument. The getJokeData method needs a URL, so let's give it the iconhasDadJoke API URL. Let's pass our first argument to the unmarshal method and set up our second argument. Our second argument is an interface into which we can store the past values. Let's set up a joke variable, which will be a joke struct. We will pass a pointer to joke as our second argument. The unmarshal method returns an error, so let's do some quick error handling before we move on. Because the error is the only return value, we can use this syntax to declare and return it all at once. The last remaining step for our getRandomJoke method is for us to actually print out a random dad joke. We only want the joke text though, and we can access this from the joke variable using dot notation. So joke dot joke is what we're looking for. We should probably think of better key names next time though. We'll also want to convert this to a string. Now we can use our newly created CLI tool to get a random dad joke. Let's use the random command to do this a few times just to see that it's actually random. And there you have it. In this tutorial, we learned how we could build a command line tool with Go and Cobra. A text version of the tutorial can be found on divrhino.com and a repo can be found on my GitHub account. I'll leave both links in the description for this video. If you found this video useful, please like it and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.